Hello there Sunday Rocks. It's really good to be with you again and I hope that you've had a great week and that you've enjoyed the lovely weather that we've had um, as well as doing lots of other exciting things as well. I don't know if you know much about things which melt. Um, perhaps you had some chocolate Easter eggs and you might have found with the very hot sunny weather that they've melted a little bit. This bracelet that I'm wearing is made out of gold and gold is a metal which if you heat it up really, really hot, it melts down and then you can make it into lots of other shapes. And you can do that with lots of different sorts of metal, which is how they make jewellery and things like that. Well, in today's story, there's going to be a little bit about melting down some metal. So listen out for it. And when that comes, you'll know what it means. We've been learning about Moses, who was a descendant of Abraham. And we learned last week, didn't we, that, Abraham, that God kept his promise to Abraham, that he was going to have lots of descendants and that he was going to have a land for them all to live in, as well as having God's blessing. And we learned last week that Moses led the whole of the big family of Israel out of Egypt where they'd been held as slaves and they were beginning on their journey to find the land that God was giving them. Today we're going to carry on with that story. So here is Moses and this part of the story can be found in the second book in the Bible in Exodus and in Exodus chapter 20 and the first few verses it says this. God spoke, and these were his words. I am the Lord your God, who brought you out of Egypt where you were slaves. You are to have no gods but me. Now that meant that God wanted the whole of the big family of Israel to only worship him, to look to him for their guidance and for what they should be doing. He wanted them to be his special big family and he didn't want them to worship other things. That means that he didn't want them to think other things were more important than he was. Now, Moses had gone up onto a big mountain near where the people were staying because he was wanting to spend some more time with God and he had a feeling that God had some really important messages for the people of Israel. And he was right, because up on the top of the mountain, God really met with Moses, and he gave him all sorts of laws and guidelines for how he wanted the people to live. But the problem was that Moses was up there quite a long time. He was up there for 40 days and 40 nights. Now, if you imagine, that's much longer even than the time when we haven't been able to go to school or we haven't been able to be in church. So even longer than that, Moses was away from the people of Israel. Now, I don't know how you found it, if you've been maybe after church or on the street and your mum and dad, before the lockdown, um, would stand and chat to people and you'd be standing there thinking, come on, we want to go home, we want to get on with things. There are things that we want to do. Would you know, the people of Israel were just like that. Moses had gone and he was having a really good long chat with God. And the people who were left at the foot of the mountain began to get really restless. And they said, where's Moses gone? We don't know where he's gone. And we want to get on with the things and find out what our lives are going to be like. And so they did something really silly. They got all of their gold jewellery and their earrings and their necklaces and any other precious bits and pieces that they'd got from the time when they left Egypt. And they put them all in a big pot and melted them down over a very, very hot fire. And once it was all runny and you could put it into a shape, they turned it into this, a gold calf which is a bit of a funny thing to make, but that's what they made. And when it was set, they put it up on a big pedestal and they began to move around it and say, this, this is our God. This is the God who brought us out of Egypt. 
This is the one that we are going to worship. Well, when Moses came down from the mountain, he could hear some noises. He could hear singing and he could hear dancing and he could hear cheering. And he wondered what on earth was going on. And as he came down, God spoke to him and said, Do you know, the people have already forgotten me. They have already started worshipping somebody else. Did you hear what those people were saying? They were saying that it was this idol, this piece of metal that had brought the people out of Egypt. We know that's not true, don't we? Because we know it was God who had done it. But the people had already forgotten. And God was quite cross with them. And Moses was very sad about it. But we know, as we carry on in the story, that although God was very sad and God was quite cross with the people, he still had his promise that he was going to bring them into a land of their own. And we're going to find out next week how the next part of the story comes about. But what about us? We don't tend to go around making big gold idols out of all the things that we've melted down in our houses, do we? But I wonder sometimes whether there are things that we'd much rather give our time to, or give our money to, or give our attention to. And we need to be careful that we are treating God as the most important, that God is our God and that we treat him like that. So we're going to say a prayer now. We're going to say thank you to God that even though the people of Israel were beginning to forget him and go off on their own way, he still loved them and still had promises and plans for them. And that's the same with us today. God has promises and he has plans for us today. So let's get rid of some of our wriggles. If you've been sitting for a little while, you might want to stand up and then sit down. And let's have a little bit of time of talking to God and saying thank you to him. Heavenly Father, thank you that you are a good father. Thank you that you are always with us and that you have plans and promises for us. Thank you that even when the people of Israel forgot about you and tried to do things their own way, you still loved them and you still wanted to make your promise true for them. And thank you that you love us today. And we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Should we do the big amen? Amen. That was quite a long one, wasn't it? Okay, well, we've got some crafts to go with our story today. And I'm just going to talk you through some of those. So first of all, we've got a couple of sheets um, which asks the question, what happens in Exodus chapter 32, which is part of the story we were learning about today. And we've got some flaps here that you can cut out and then stick over the right picture. So you'll need to read what's on each of those flaps and then match them up to stick them over the right picture, which means then that you'll read the flap, lift it up and you'll see the picture underneath. Now if you're feeling super creative this morning you could use um, some lollipop sticks or some strips of cardboard or even some toilet rolls to make some little models of the people of Israel. You could dress them up and put faces on them, put some wool or some material or some bits of paper around them. Um, go really mad and see how many you can make and how you can make a really great big family of Israel. The other thing that you could do is if you've got something like Play-Doh or Plasticine, you could have a go at modelling some little um, characters from the story. You might want to have a go and see if you can make a scene with all of the little people from Israel with that golden calf that they've made as well. I think it could be quite difficult to make a calf out of Play-Doh, but I'm sure you would do a much better job than I would. And the other thing that you can do if you want to, just to remember God's promise, is that there's a colouring sheet as well, which has got some of the things from the story today. And then it's got a picture for you to colour as well. 
Well, it's been lovely sharing with you again today. I do hope that you have lots of fun um, doing some of those crafts. And if you want to get your mums and dads to take photographs of any of them and send them in, we would love to see them and we'll show them um, in some of the future sessions as well. So have a great week and we we'll look forward to seeing you again next time. Bye bye.